Knee pain is not random. The exact location of pain can serve as a diagnostic clue to the underlying problem and can take appropriate steps. In this video, I'm going to tell you why your knee hurts and what you should do about it. To make it easier, I've created a mnemonic to help you remember the 10 most common causes of knee pain. There are timestamps for each diagnosis detail, so you can jump exactly to what you're looking for. Now, let's get started. Mnemonic for causes of knee pain is ill-prepared jump over my body caused his knee pain. The mnemonic helps us remember the causes of knee pain moving from the lateral or outer side to the medial or inner side. Let's break it down. The ill part covers lateral or outer knee pain. Letter I stands for iliotibial band syndrome or ITBS causing pain predominantly at the site of iliotibial band attachment at the knee. Letter L represents lateral meniscus injury with pain along the outer knee joint line. Second letter L stands for LCL or lateral collateral ligament injury with pain and swelling on the lateral or posterolateral side of the knee. The prepared jump over part includes causes of anterior or front knee pain. The word prepared is divided into two portions, pre and paired. Pre stands for prepatellar bursitis, presenting with localized swelling and pain over the patella or kneecap and paired represents patellofemoral pain syndrome with poorly localized pain under or around the patella. Jump is for jumper's knee or patellar tendinitis with pain localized to the inferior pole of the patella. Letter O in over represents osgood schlatter disease, a common cause of knee pain and tenderness over the tibial tubercle in adolescence. Finally, my body helps us remember the causes of medial or inner knee pain. Letter M in my refers to medial meniscus tear causing pain along the inner knee joint line. Letter B in body reminds us of bursitis, specifically pessanserine bursitis, causing pain over the upper medial tibia just below the joint line. Letter O in body represents osteoarthritis or OA, one of the most common causes of knee pain in middle-aged and older patients. Now that we have the mnemonic, let's go over each condition in detail. Iliotibial band syndrome or ITBS. The iliotibial band is a strong, thick band of tissue that runs along the outer side of your thigh from the hip to the knee. Repetitive flexion and extension of the knee, like in running or cycling, can cause irritation and inflammation, leading to pain on the outer side of the knee, especially during activity. Focal tenderness at the distal portion of the iliotibial band is a key examination finding. Diagnosis is clinical, meaning no imaging is required. Treatment is non-operative, focusing on physical therapy, stretching, and strengthening exercises. NSAIDs may be used for pain control. The meniscus is a pad of C-shaped cartilage in the knee that absorbs shocks. The knee joint has two menisci, lateral and medial. A lateral meniscus tear is a common sports injury, usually caused by a twisting motion or degenerative changes in the knee. A longitudinal or bucket handle tear may occur, leading to intermittent knee locking along with lateral knee pain and swelling. Diagnosis can be made with the McMurray test to look for meniscal injury. MRI is often required, especially if surgery is being considered. Small tears with mild symptoms can be managed conservatively, but persistent effusion or disabling symptoms may require an orthopedic referral for possible surgery. The collateral ligaments of the knee. The knee has two major collateral ligaments, the lateral and medial collateral ligaments. Their primary function is to stabilize the knee and prevent excessive sideways movement. An LCL injury typically occurs due to a direct blow to the inside of the knee, called varus stress, placing stress on the outer ligament. This results in lateral or posterolateral knee pain, swelling, and mechanical symptoms such as locking and giving out. Exam shows tenderness along the lateral knee line. Although not always needed, an MRI may be necessary for severe cases. Isolated minor LCL injuries are typically managed with bracing and physical therapy. An orthopedic surgery referral for repairs obtained for more complicated injuries of the LCL alone or additional knee structures. Does bending on knees causing bursitis sound familiar? Prolonged kneeling can cause prepatellar bursitis, leading to swelling and tenderness over the kneecap or patella. Diagnosis is clinical and imaging is not required. Treatment involves avoiding activities that aggravate symptoms like kneeling. If an infection is suspected, aspiration of fluid may be needed along with antibiotics. Patellofemoral pain syndrome, or PFPS, is caused by vigorous physical activity that puts repeated stress on the knee joint, especially activities like running downhill, improper jumping, or climbing stairs. The most common symptom is a dull, aching, poorly localized pain in the front of the knee, which worsens with exercise or repeated knee bending like climbing stairs. Diagnosis is made with a clinical exam, including the patellar grind test. 
where compressive force is applied to the patella to identify pathological changes in the retropatellar area. Patients with PFPS require activity modification, including avoiding activities that involve repeated knee bending and engaging in physical therapy exercises, especially to strengthen the vastus medialis oblique muscle. Jumping sports like basketball or volleyball cause repetitive trauma and inflammatory stress on the patellar tendon, leading to jumper's knee or patellar tendonitis. It causes pain in the lower portion of the kneecap, which worsens at the start of activity, improves during activity, but is most significant at the end. Treatment includes rest, NSAIDs, eccentric strengthening exercises, and physical therapy. Overuse injury in adolescence due to repetitive pulling of the patellar tendon on the tibial tuberosity during growth causes chronic avulsion of the tibial tuberosity, called Osgood-Schlatter disease. This condition leads to pain, swelling, and a bony prominence at the tibial tuberosity. X-ray imaging may show an avulsion of the tibial tuberosity. Management includes ice application over the tibial tuberosity, short-term pain relievers, continued sports participation if pain is tolerable, and strengthening physical therapy. A twisting injury or degenerative changes can cause medial meniscus injury, similar to lateral meniscus tears but affecting the medial side. This leads to knee pain along medial joint line along with locking and instability. Diagnosis can be made with the McMurray test to look for meniscal injury. Diagnosis may require an MRI, depending on the patient's age and whether surgery is being considered. Treatment is usually non-operative for small tears with infrequent symptoms. However, if the tear is associated with persistent effusion or disabling symptoms, surgery is needed. The pies anserine bursa is a fluid-filled sac located on the inner side of the knee joint. It can become inflamed due to conditions like knee osteoarthritis, obesity, diabetes, or knee malalignment. This condition causes medial knee pain and tenderness over the upper medial tibia, just below the joint line. Pain is especially noticeable with activities such as rising from a chair, going up or down stairs, or lying in bed with one knee pressing against the other. It is strongly suspected if a patient with diagnosed osteoarthritis develops pain at night. Imaging is generally not necessary, though an x-ray may be obtained to check for underlying osteoarthritis. Treatment includes weight reduction programs, quadriceps strengthening exercises, and short-term NSAIDs. In refractory cases, intraarticular steroids may be needed. One of the most common causes of knee pain in middle age to older patients is osteoarthritis, or OA, a degenerative joint disease predominantly affecting the medial knee compartment. However, it can affect any part of the knee joint. The primary symptoms of OA are chronic, use-related pain, stiffness, and reduced mobility, which worsen with weight-bearing activities. Knee osteoarthritis is usually diagnosed clinically, but imaging or lab tests may be required if the patient presents with atypical symptoms. Treatment depends on severity. Mild to moderate osteoarthritis can be managed with activity modification and topical analgesics. Severe osteoarthritis may require oral NSAIDs, intraarticular steroid injections, or even knee replacement surgery. Treatments like opioids, hyaluronic acid injections, nutritional supplements, and acupuncture have unclear proven benefits. Many causes of knee pain could not be included in this short video as those cause diffuse knee pain. The examples are septic arthritis, gout, pseudogout, rheumatoid arthritis, and Lyme disease. That's it for today's video. We have covered 10 important causes of knee pain with their locations and management options. If you like this video, please hit that like button, share, and subscribe for hundreds of medical mnemonics and explanations. See you in the next one.